Hey VC, what's up? Uh, Tim back here again, excuse me. <clears throat> so, uh, tonight's video, um, maybe gonna shoot a couple, but we'll see. But this one's definitely going up. So this one is a contest entry to all around VC, great guy, good friend, uh, Ron Haggerty. Ron Haggerty has hit 500 subscriptions. That's an amazing feat. Kudos to you. I hope you get thousands more because you truly deserve it. Your channel's awesome. Great taste in music. Love talking with you offline. So, found out he doesn't live too far away from me. So, I'm hoping at some point there's going to be a meetup because metal in my town is not working. I need some and I can't find any. So, in honor of his 500 subscriptions, he has asked us, you, me, all of us, to come up with five lists of five things about anything that you like or I like or we like or they like, somebody likes, that has to do with entertainment. It doesn't have to be with music, it doesn't have to be with movies, you can just pick whatever you want. He really wanted the ownership and I kind of see what he's doing. He wants to get you, you, know, you, the person, not the collector or not the collection. So I ran with it a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to show any vinyl. Oh, the vinyl community. <laughs> Plenty of stuff coming up, trust me. Music related, movies related, because I love movies. And for a big part of my life, video games were very important. I played a lot of them, but I also sold them for a long time. You can process where. Moving on. So, I wanted to kind of touch a little bit on that because that was obviously a part of my life too. So, we're gonna, I got a list, I got some stuff, let's go right in. So let's jump right into the video games. And what I wanted to do was want to focus on one of my favorite systems. Uh, my favorite, favorite system is the Sega Dreamcast, but it's packed away. A lot of the stuff I would show is, is, is odd. That's it, neither here nor there. So, one that came to mind that I had a lot of games for and still do and still a favorite system of mine was the Xbox 360. I didn't own an original Xbox, I was a PlayStation guy. And when the next wave came and, you know, they said the PlayStation 3 was going to be X much and the Xbox 360 was going to be not as X much, I went with the Xbox. And I'm glad I did. I've made some wonderful friends there, friends that... I've never met in real life, like some of you, but we've kept in touch, you know, from playing games and stuff like that, and, you know, it's it's amazing how the World Wide Web can bring us all a little closer together, so I wanted to celebrate that with five of my favorite games for the Xbox. So, uh, first two, we're going to get into a little controversial, uh, Grand Theft Auto 4. Now, I, those who play these games know the content and things like that and I'm of the ilk that you know hey we're adults you can enjoy it whichever you want and I have five I like five but to me this one really hit home really enjoyed it I think may have had to do with some of the the fun I had with a friend talking while playing because I don't think you know this one didn't have a lot of really any multiplayer but we would talk a lot while we played and we were trying to do some of the dumbest things we could ever do. We figured out ways to break games when, before you could break, you know, real weird stuff. So that's kind of where, where that lied. Another one in the same vein was Saints Row 2. And what I liked about Saints Row is that it never took itself seriously. Where Grand Theft Auto did take itself seriously, this one, not so much. It was sarcastic humor. It was parody humor. Again, adult humor but humor nonetheless. So my third is Portal 2. Now, for those of you who don't know, Portal was a puzzle game put out by Valve Entertainment, and it used the idea that you could make portal guns, and, you know, if you walk through one, you would appear at another end, and so on and so forth, and you'd have to use space and physics to solve these puzzles. Well, there was an underlying story there once you realized that it was more than puzzles. And this is the continuation sometime later. And what I like about this one is that it has a charm and a character that the first one didn't have. 
The first one was a, a physics idea. They turned into a game and it was very successful. Well, now they realized they had something. They added more elements to it, but they added a, a an interesting story that really moved the, the game along. And I really enjoyed it. Um, it's one of the few times that once I beat a game, I instantly started another game. Sorry, my cat's being weird. Um, my number two is Borderlands. Now, Borderlands 2 specifically. Borderlands 1, Borderlands 2. Sorry, I'm closing the door so the cat can go do whatever the cat's going to do. The, that game was, if you're familiar with Diablo, with a lot of grinding and killing and looting and stuff like that, but this was four-player co-op, and, and it came at a perfect time when I kind of needed some of that, you know, fr friend camaraderie. Would play a ton, lot, just almost every night, you know, just, it, it really, it really did, did something for me. And I love the franchise, and 2 was just so funny. It was, it was hysterical. And to me, it never was about the graphics or had to be the best gameplay. It was the overall presentation, you know, what was I getting out of it? And then my number one favorite Xbox 360 game was Bioshock. This story was riveting. It was a last-minute purchase for me. I didn't pre-order it when it first came out and was on the fence about it and played the demo and kind of liked it. And... Where I worked, we got in one of the last, we got an extra collector's edition, and then I just pulled out the card and swiped and said, "Let's do it." And man, am I glad I did. Um, there's others on the system that really hit home with me. Uh, Batman: Arkham Asylum comes to mind. Uh, had some fun with the Forza series, so you know, a big fan of the Xbox 360. So, I'm gonna go to the list because you know I'm old and I forget things. I thought it'd be fun. Sorry, the cat's trying to sneak back in. I thought it would be fun to kind of delve into some things that weren't as tangible. So I thought I would talk about some of my favorite metal singers. A lot of my metal is gone. It's sad, and I'm going to be re try to rebuild it. <clears throat> so these kind of these kind of things make me kind of reminisce and you know focus whatever I want to get back in my collection. So my top five metal singers. They're kind of middle of the road. I'm not going to pull any surprise or oddball names, but they're good for a reason. Number five, Don Dokken. In his heyday. He doesn't have it anymore. Sorry, Don, if you've ever watched this, which I sincerely doubt. You were a god among men, but you ain't got it anymore. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying for your spot. You can still sing better than me, but from where you're at now to where you used to be, Sorry, bud. Number four, you got to give a tip of the cap to the man, the myth, the legend, the man who started it all, Mr. Ozzy Osbourne. Technically not the best singer. He could hold his own. He was good. And and obviously his lifestyle took a toll uh, later in later years. But you look at Black Sabbath, you look at his solo stuff up to uh, No More Tears, maybe a little bit after. Um, just top of his game. It, and, and it just invoked that that metal. But number three, I gotta give the hat to Dio. I mean, Dio was a better singer than Ozzy. Sorry, I may lose some people on this one, but Dio's vocals were phenomenal. The man just could belt it out. And you saw how tiny he was. It's like, where are you pulling this from? So, number two... Mr. Rob Halford. I mean, there's very few people on this planet that can hit a high note, scream, not destroy their voice, you know, and scream at the end, like the end of the show. Like, they're not hitting the screamers at the beginning. They're doing it at the end. I mean, look at Painkiller. Look at the stuff that he's done. Well, hell, look at, look at Firepower. It just, he goes on. He's, he's like the Energizer Bunny. He doesn't stop. And his voice is, yeah, maybe missed the half step, but, I mean, Rob's, been, Rob's had it for a long time, and he's always been a phenomenal singer. And my number one, Mr. Bruce Dickinson. I, 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 the moment I heard Iron Maiden changed my life. I knew that that was 
that was the metal for me. So there's my top five metal singers. Now let's talk about five of my favorite concerts I've been to of all time. And I've been to a lot. I've seen seen all kinds of stuff. I've seen Manson. I've seen U2. I know some people aren't a fan. It's fine. I've been in small dives. I've been in big arenas. I've, you know, Heart and Kansas. That, that one's for you, Farley. I, I'm going to take you to a Kansas show. I've seen Styx. I've seen ZZ Top. Rush. Surprisingly, Rush didn't make the list. I, I'm... It was very close. I'd put them at like a 5.1. But these were my top five. Some of them for personal reasons. So number five, uh, a few years, a while back, I, I went to the Smoke and Groove store. Smoke and Groove, if you don't know, is a collection of R&B, hip-hop. I mean, I listened to it all. And uh, what made this one stand out was uh, it was Cypress Hill. It was Public Enemy. It was Gangstar, so I got to see the late great Guru do his thing before he passed. Um, Busta Rhymes, which eh, neither here nor there. Wyclef was cool, but you know wasn't what I was there for. Uh, Black Eyed Peas before Fergie, so I, I liked them then. But being able to say I saw Chuck D, Flavor Flav, the entire Public Enemy lineup. And they did one of my favorite songs of all time, Black Steel and the Hour Chaos. And I actually stood on a rail with my fist held up. And Chuck looked right at me. Because it was an amphitheater, so you could see. Pointed and gave me the fist. So that had to make my top five. Number four. And this is purely just because of the event and the size it was. Was Live Aid. I did go to Live Aid. It was a very unique and interesting experience. I'm glad I went, but it sucked. The bands were great. Don't get me wrong. It was awesome seeing, you know, the reuniting of, of Black Sabbath and, you know, these major hits of the people of the day. I mean, Ashford and Simpson brought out Teddy Pendergrass in a wheelchair. This was after his accident, and it was touching to see him. Um, we got to see Zeppelin reunite. The satellite feed from the UK would go out constantly. So whatever was happening in the UK, we wouldn't see in Philly. On top of that, it was death hot. I mean, nowhere was there shade. They ran out of ice at like 1 in the afternoon. It got so dire that they were literally hosing people down with fire hoses to make sure they didn't pass out. So, great event great memory at that moment it was miserable but I was there and that's why it makes my top five number three uh, two of my favorite DJs and again I like I said listen to a lot of different stuff DJ Shadow and Cut Chemist DJ Shadow self, -produ self producer has done a lot of different things Cut Chemist one half of Jurassic 5 He's also done a couple solo albums. He's really prolific. He's worked with a, a, like a Latin jazz outfit, Aza Motley. Um, a while back, they did a special all, all 45 mix called Brain Freeze. And that really started them down a very unique road of trying these unique things. And they did three different show set pieces around seven inches and experiments. The one I saw on that was a unique fourth mix where they use records exclusively owned by Africa Bambata. And if you know hip hop history, Africa Bambata was one of the three big DJs that brought the breaks and the, the sound to these parties or the, to these events that happened basically in the street. And that was the basis for it. And so not only was it unique to hear their spin on it, but these were the actual records that were played in the parks, in the clubs, in the discos, in the 70s. So this was the foundation for a genre of music that I really enjoy. And I had to go. When it came, when it came into town, I had to go. Number two, Pink Floyd. I saw Pink Floyd on the Momentary Labs of Reason tour. I know some people will say, nah, it doesn't really count because no Roger Waters. 
It was a phenomenal show. Um, there was no opening act. We got two sets from Pink Floyd. It was enclosed, so you can imagine the aroma. And so they, they momentary lapse of reason was why they were there. They actually played the whole album. I'm on the fence about whether I like this playing the whole album because the idea of a concert is you don't know where they're going to play next. So with that one, you knew what they were playing next. But still, it was iconic. It was Pink Floyd. They put on a fantastic show. It was also a great memory for me because I went with two of my friends from high school. One of them had just gotten his license that day. Like, he literally took the test and passed. So we were like, dude, you're driving. It's on you. And we pick up the third guy, and he hits a gas pump. Not 12 hours into being a licensed driver, he hits a gas pump. Dents it, no major damage, but of course, he does the right thing and gives the information. I'm like, <laughs> this is not happening. We're on our way to see Pink Floyd, and you're trying to kill us already. So, um, great show, great night. Sadly, one other friend, the third one that we picked up, his name is Jeff. He's no longer with us, so it's a very cherished memory, um, and that's probably why it makes my top five. Um, he was a, a great friend, and he was a, a, a great soul, and he was a guy that we could talk Hendrix and Floyd and Zeppelin, and then we can flip it and talk Big Daddy Kane and Public Enemy and Eric B. and Rakim, so he was like a brother to me, and I miss him. So, And my number one, see previous list, Iron Maiden. I saw Iron Maiden on the Somewhere on Tour. Ingve Malmsteen opened up. He was supporting Trilogy. <clears throat> By the time you pick your brains back up and put them back into your fragmented skull, here comes Maiden. And we were dead square on, facing the stage. We got the entire show right there. There was not a miss. It was fantastic. Sorry, there was some commotion. I wanted to pause it, so I didn't pick any of it. So Maiden, amazing show. I think about that show often. Everything that we saw, and it was just... Like I said, you open with, with being Vey, and you, you end with Maiden. <laughs> That's a night. So I got two more left. I can, I can count. I really can. I, I work with numbers for a living. Thankfully, I have machines that help me out. I have two, two left. Top five vinyl ones. Uh, this is a lot, because this was hard probably for me, because I want so much. I want it all. I don't we all? So these are my five that I look at. Some of them I probably never get. Number one, Badlands self-titled. Amazing album. Ray Gillum, Jakey Lee, Need We Say More. I have it on CD. I need it on vinyl. Two, Jimmy's Electric Ladyland, the UK version with the with the ladies on the cover. It's expensive. It's ridiculously expensive. Um, I've had one slip through my fingers. The price, I could not pull the trigger. Uh, I've seen them. But it's not something I want to settle for like a $20, it's beat the piss. Mm -mm. No, it's got to be at least in decent shape because that's something you, know, you respect for what it was. And Jimmy wasn't even a fan of the cover. Doesn't mean I don't want it. Number three, Eddie Hazel, Games, Dames, and Guitar Thangs. Eddie Hazel was the guitar player for Funkadelic. They were not just funk, they were psychedelic rock, they were psychedelic funk and his solo album is phenomenal he is vastly an underlooked guitar player look at maggot brain from funkadelic that guitar solo is perfect for what it was and his album amazing he was taken from us way too soon and that is a 
fantastic album. If you've not heard it, go find it and stream it, especially if you're a fan of the George Clinton era of that Parliament Funkadelic. He incorporates that, but he incorporates the psych and, and soul, and it's phenomenal. It's a fantastic record. Number four, it's a really a new addition for me. Uh, Vinyl Ritchie showed an album, I think it was today, uh, it was called The End Introspection, and this is a, a psych record. Got reissued for Record Store Day, never heard of it. As soon as you showed the cover, I was like, wow, I'm, I'm intrigued, you know, I want to see what's up. So I streamed it. I've been on a psych kick, like there's no tomorrow, and this just hit me, and reissues are out there so this one's probably going to be one of the first achievable off the list um, but I gotta get it it's phenomenal and then number five I have it on CD I know there's reissues but I'm I'm pretty sure I think I want to settle for I, want, I don't want to settle for a reissue I want to first press um, my favorite Anthrax album of all time Among the Living that album front to back is just a punch in the face it's the perfect thrash, one of the perfect thrash albums I've ever heard in my life. I used to drive my mother crazy with that cassette. Um, as soon as I got into the CDs, that was one of the first CDs I grabbed because it just it just doesn't let up. I used to be proud of myself because I used to be able to pronounce Evil Nif Confessin' very easily. And all my other friends were like, what the, what the hell are you talking about? I love Anthrax and that album. I Am The Law, Evil Nif Confessin', Indians, I mean, just caught in a mosh. I mean, it doesn't matter. So, so we're on to the last list. The last thing, I'm, and this is something I'm going to show. So, I'm a huge movie guy. I love movies, all different types of genres. And this one was hard to pick my top five. A couple of these are going to be franchises. Sorry, Rob. But when I pick a franchise, I will show you my favorite one. So coming in at number five. This is just pure nostalgia for me from seeing these movies in the theaters and just having a grand time sitting on the edge of my seat. This is the Indiana Jones Complete Adventures. All three plus that really crappy thing that they tried to call a movie. But my, my personal favorite which they get wrong in the title. They say Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's just Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's my number five. My number four movie. It's hard to call this a cult classic because so many people love it. This movie is amazing. I loved Fight Club from the word go. It just grabbed me. It was phenomenal. It didn't let go. I loved the features. I loved everything about it. It was one of those films that you knew you were watching something special. And I, I break it out frequently. I, I absolutely love it. My number three. Warriors. Come out and play. This to me was the perfect film in the 70s. I can't imagine not having this. I love this movie. I love this franchise so much. I'm dying to get my hands on the soundtrack. I remember when the video game came out for PS2, I was concerned because I thought they were going to bastardize it. Still bought it, played the hell out of it still one of my favorite games on that system this franchise which I say franchise it is one movie that spawned music it talked about the gangs it brought it all to life really created a subculture I absolutely love this movie I cannot wait for my youngest who's old enough so he can watch this with me I, I can't speak about the Warriors enough it was bigger than life, but it was also a look at life. If that makes any sense. My number two, and the first one. 
I even like the remake. The remake's not bad. My four-year-old loves the Ghostbusters. We watch all of them all the time. But number one to me will always be will always be King. There's something about the Ghostbusters that was it was not quite raunchy for the cast. I mean, Bill Murray and and Harold Ray, late great Harold Ramis. You know. Dan Aykroyd, that cast could have really pushed it over, but it didn't need it. They knew exactly what to do. Dan Aykroyd and Hal Ramis wrote a perfect picture. Absolutely. It had drama, suspense, scary parts, tons of funny. To me, it's one of the best films I ever saw. Cheesy sci-fi moments now withstanding. We watch it all the time, and... I absolutely love it. I'm a Star Wars guy, so number one has to be Star Wars. I love them all. My wife and I disagree on whether or not one, two, and three exist. She says my youngest will never see them. Uh, he, he's going to see them, I'm sorry. But this is f by far and large my favorite movie, my favorite movie franchise. And the one that stands out for me is Episode Five: and Empire Strikes Back. Not because of the five, but it really, and this is this is how I kind of break it down. The movie, Star Wars A New Hope, episode four, works as, a, as its own. But five brings you in. Empire Strikes Back, you feel pain, you feel loss, you feel that sense of dire. It is one of the few move, true movies that leaves you gut punched. Because the bad guys have the upper hand credits. What do you do? There's, you, you can't go next. I remember seeing this in the movie theaters. And I'm like, this is not ending like this. This can't end. And then we had to wait and discuss what was going to happen. And for, for that, it's my favorite film of all time. There's other movies I could have brought in that are famous, that, that, that are some of my favorites, and it was hard to leave them out. John Carpenter's The Thing, Jaws. Um, the, I'm, brain's escaping me. So before I hit the 30 minute mark, because this was supposed to be a quick video, I tend to ramble. And for that, I apologize. But Ron. Congratulations on the 500 subs. I didn't want to give you just a cheesy little video. I wanted to give you something special. Hopefully I've hit the mark. If I haven't, thanks for sticking around for 30 minutes anyway. If you're not subscribed to Ron, the first thing I have to do is ask you, why not? He's a great guy. He's a great family man. Loves his music. He's passionate about so many things in his life. So I'm going to leave a link below. If you don't know Ron Haggerty, you're truly missing out of a fantastic person in the VC and someone you should know. Click the link, watch a couple videos, you'll be hooked just like I was. Give him a sub. That's all I'm asking. Give him a chance. If he he will he will win you over. Guaranteed. Loves metal. Huge striper fan. I mean, I wish I had some of his striper records. Holy smokes, those things are amazing. So check him out. Ron, congratulations on the 500 subs. It was an honor and a privilege to, to speak with you. I actually, we, we talked earlier today for, well, maybe it was yesterday. My days are running together anymore. It's good talking with you, brother. Take care. Everybody in the VC, hope you're well, safe, and having a great day. Peace.